Hey fellas, today we're going to paint the 132nd scale Cyber Hobbies BF109 E7 Tro. Now I was going to do a video build on this, but then I got uh, to looking on the YouTubes and found that Will Pattison had done an extremely thorough build review of basically the same kit. His was the Dragon Hobbies BF109 E4, but it's basically the same kit. Uh, this has got, a, I guess, a, a few minor changes, but uh, looking his, at his directions that he has on there, <clears throat> it, it's basically the same plane, and this is made by Dragon Hobbies, apparently. So, so I'm going to, I forewent the, the build part of the video, so if you want to see how this thing goes together, which I'm not a real big fan of this kit, there's just, uh, I think, I think there are just too many issues with engineering, in my opinion, um, to, to say this is a, a well-done kit. I mean, it, it can turn out to be a pretty good-looking model with a lot of extra work, but it's definitely not a kit for the beginner. So what we're going to focus on here, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do a thorough video on how, to, how I paint uh, my planes, or this particular aircraft. And I've got it all put together. And I'm not a big fan of moving parts, so the only moving part that I have in this one is the canopy can come off. And we're going to leave it at that. Everything else has been uh, screwed, glued, and, and whatever. So this is strictly going to be a, a, a painting video. And typically how I do my, how I paint my aircraft is I'll black base it. And uh, for those of you that are new to the hobby, basically prime it in black. And then I'll do a marbling layer. And a lot of guys do the marbling layer in the actual color. Uh, and what I mean by marbling layer is when, whenever you, you uh, paint it in black, you just do a bunch of squig. After you prime it in black, you do a bunch of squiggly lines to, uh, with, with, the, with the, the, the actual color to kind of give it a mottled type um, worn effect to it faded uh, irregular because when you look at when you look at a look at an aircraft you don't typically see just one straight color there's lots there's a variation in tones and and what that marbling layer does is give you that variation in tones and gives you a little bit more realistic of a look but with this one there it's a real complicated paint job and I'm gonna flash up some pictures. Let me flash up some pictures real quick. That's the, those are some of the reference pictures that I'm using and kind of I'm not going to go I'm not going to follow those references exactly I'm going to kind of throw in some of my uh, artistic license to this paint job but because there's so many steps I mean I've I've outlined like nine steps already just before I put a clear coat and put decals down so it's going to be pretty complicated color scheme so I'm not going to black base. I'm just going to I'm just going to primer it in gray and do all my shading and variation in colors uh, after I put the base coats down. And I'll I'll do that with an airbrush and and with with probably oil paints and uh enamels and and some other things. So uh that's how we're going to do this one. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, number one in my my nine step process for the for the actual base coat, is I'm going to paint the canopy the same color as the interior, which I used um, like a German gray color, uh, XF22, I believe it is. So I'm going to get that done. You don't really need to see me spray that on. And then I'm going to primer it, and then I'll show you the next steps that I'm going to do. Alrighty, uh, step one and two are done. As you can see here, I've got my little list. 
And uh, so what I did is I hit the can on the outside of the canopy with uh, RLM2, which I used Tamiya XF22, the same color that I painted the interior, because with the uh, with all the can canopy framing, you want that color to show through from the inside. And I'm not big on painting the inside of the canopies. It's a, it's a pain in the butt. So uh, we're just painting on the outside and the color will show through. It'll be a little glossy on the inside, but that's okay. Then I went over with a primer. I used Mr. Surfacer 1500 Gray and uh, my, favorite, uh, my favorite primer. Then I hit the inside of the wheel wells with the XF22 again as well as the landing gear and what else did I do? Oh, I had one more interior part. It's like a an armor plate that, that sits up here and in, in, inside the canopy. I also went with, uh, I lightened the XF22 with a little bit of white and thinned it down and used a sponge and kind of went in there and I don't know if the video will pick it up but uh, I did a little bit of sponge work and just kind of modeled it a little bit. I may do some chipping with a brush later on, but uh, I thought that that might add to the add to the depth of weathering that I plan on doing with this. As you can see down here, and and I had completed a plane. Let me show you. This is a, I believe it was a Tamiya or Hasegawa trope in 148 scale that I did a little over a year ago. And I had sanded down the seam line along the top. Now, apparently in the real thing, and, and I actually saw one at the Smithsonian, there is a seam line that runs along the center line of the fuselage. Now, when I glued it together, I thought maybe, because they glue in halves, I thought maybe I could save that seam line up here and not have to scribe it, but it it, it, it uh, didn't fit together real well, so I ended up having to sand it and fill it with uh, CA glue, so then I just made a light scribe line along the top. And then the bottom one was good enough, I thought. It's not perfect, but uh, I didn't do anything with the bottom one, so I just left that one there. But uh, this is similar to what I want to do this this 148 scale but uh, I want to add a little bit more weathering and, and do a few more things than what I did with this one so all right uh, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm not gonna overly chip this plane all the reference pictures that I got don't show them overly chipped but I have found where where there's some along the wing root there's some chipping down to the bare aluminum so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray dark aluminum here and a little bit here, and then I'll do some hairspray. And then once I get my, my top, my, my base colors done, then I'll go along and I'll, I'll do some chipping right along here. Not much, but, but just enough. Then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to paint this whole cowl is going to be yellow. The engine cowl is going to be yellow. The tail fin here is going to be yellow. So in, instead of painting everything, then masking and painting yellow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and do my yellow work on the cowl and the tail fin and mask that off. And then I'll probably, and there's a white band right here, I'll probably paint that white and then mask that off as well. And then I'll come over with my with my tan and my blue and my green camouflage splotches. And I think that's just going to be the easiest way to do this. I've got some, when I go to mask this, this off. I've got, I'll show you, I've got some of this like putty. It's like a, uh, I don't know, my kid got it at Walmart and I ended up stealing it from her. But it's kind of like that Panzer putty. I've never actually used Panzer putty, but from what I've seen, it looks almost exactly like the same stuff, only this stuff is like $4 at Walmart. And I'll throw some of that in there to mask that off when I go to paint the blue. So I'm going to paint this, get this uh, stuff done, metalizer yellow and white. And then uh, we'll go from there.
Okay, <clears throat> so I've got my base paint of yellow down. Now what I've done here is I've darkened the yellow in a uh, in my my tighter airbrush. I call it tighter just because it's my my very fine airbrush. I've darkened it with a little bit of red, and I'm just going to hit. I'm going to do a lot of my a lot of my variation in tones with oil paint, but I am going to hit hit this with a little bit of airbrush work. So I've darkened this just a little bit, and I'm just gonna go over some of these panel lines and hit it in various areas. All right, now what I've done is I've added a little bit of white to my original yellow, and I'm just gonna Hit maybe the top, top of it. Just give it a, a little bit of a contrast. Okay, so there's my yellow done. I'm gonna paint some off camera. I'm just gonna spray some aluminum metalizer over this area and uh, do my white stripe along the back and then we're gonna mask all that off. Okay, I've got it all masked up. Got my yellow masked off, my white, and <clears throat> I am gonna hit this area with uh, chipping fluid. You can use hairspray or chipping fluid. I've got some uh, ammo MIG stuff I'm going to use. I've also got the wheel wheels puttied up and masked off. Now you got to be pretty quick with this stuff. This is that, that stuff I was talking about that's like Panzer putty, I assume. It's called Magic Putty, or I, I think it comes in different types. This is like if you put a UV light on it, it changes colors. But this was at Walmart for like four bucks. And it's basically like a, like a real, almost like a silly putty, but I think a little more smooth. And what happens is if you leave it in here, it'll eventually flatten out. So if you use it for masking, it's going to move eventually and flatten out. So you want to be pretty quick if you use it for, for masking type stuff. But I found it works really well. It's a lot easier to work with than blue tack. So I'm going to get the blue sprayed on and then uh, and then hit it with the, the brown on top. I think I'm just going to freehand it and then uh, do my camouflage and then we'll be ready to, uh, to decal it. All right, I've got my blue color. I've, I mixed this up a while ago. I'm not exactly sure what I got in it, but uh, I remember I got it pretty close to the, the colors that are actually that they used. And uh, so I just got it labeled BF109 Blue. So I've got that in my airbrush. I put uh, chipping, two coats of chipping effects on the wing root. And now I'm ready to paint. Okay, I've got it all painted. And unmasked. I also went along and hand painted in the exhaust, uh, the exhaust stacks with like a dark brown, and then uh, well, actually with my rust effects colors from Ammo Mig. Basically, what I did is I went with a dark, and then towards the tips I went a little bit lighter, and then a little bit lighter yet. 
I also chipped. I'm not real happy with the chipping, how it's turned out. But uh, we may, we may, uh, if it doesn't look right, I'm dropping stuff, if it doesn't look good, later on I'll fix it. But what I want to show you is the swastika. Uh, from what I've seen, the swastikas have a white outline. <clears throat> and whatever your opinion on the political issue and the, the moral issue of having a swastika on there, to me, it's just a symbol. I understood what it stands for. <clears throat> and a lot of companies, this company doesn't even, they include, this, they include the decal in pieces, but they don't even show you where to put it. But uh, I know actually where to put it, but they don't include the white outline. So what I've done is I've cut these out, the swastika emblems out with uh, my Cricut. And I'm going to show you how I am going to put these on. So I'm going to start with the white outline. And I just use my, my transfer tape. And I'm going to put it down on the decal. So I can get it to come up. Put it on the decal, put it on the, okay. You can see the uh, transfer tape lifted it, lifted it up. So basically we got, what I'm going to use this for is to position the swastika. Let me get a, set the tweezers. What I'm going to do is just lift this up and it should leave to me a sticker tape. Yeah, it's close enough. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Okay, now this is going to allow me, rather than try to figure out where to put the mask, this is going to let me align the location of the swastika up. <coughs> so I can put my mask down. So then what I'll do And I do this with the transfer tape, that way when I, uh, if, if I just cut this out and tried to pick it up with my fingers or tweezers, it's going to get all bent out of shape. So now what I'm going to do, let's get my tweezers. Kind of line my mask up. This would have been a lot easier if I wouldn't have put it all together first. Okay. 
now what I can do is I can lift this up. And I'm not going to need this part anymore. So this is going to be my white my white outline right up here. And then what I'll do is I'll come along and I will lift up. I've got an inner piece. So what's going to happen here <clears throat> is I'm going to paint the inside of this mask black. Then I'm going to take this piece and <coughs> put it in there, mask off the black, and then paint the white around it. Simple as that. All right, fellas, it's the next morning. Last night I put a coat of X-22 to me as clear coat on it. Thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner, I got a nice smooth finish on it. And laid down my decals this morning, as you can see, the swastika sign, it turned out pretty good. I was going to, I thought about painting a lot of the insignias and the numbers, but this kit comes with cartograph decals. And in my experience, those are, those are really good decals, they lay down really well. So I thought I'd try them, and these were no exception. They were, they snug down quite nicely. A little bit of heat from a hairdryer and some Microsol and Microset, and I got them to snug down quite nicely. So next on the agenda is I will clear coat the decals once I'm satisfied that they're dry and where they're snug down as much as they can be. And then I'll do a, a panel line wash and... Uh, Put a flat coat on it and then do some come back with some oil oil paint so I can vary my tones and and just add a little bit of extra. I will probably do some chipping as well. As you can see here, the the chipping that I did with the scratches effect. I don't know, I guess it looks okay. I'm not exactly hundred percent happy with it. But I think what I'm gonna do is take some some gray paint and just kind of chip in, in various areas, not not go overboard, just to give it uh, just a little bit of something extra. So I'll wait for that to for these to, to all snug down where they're supposed to go, and uh, this will probably be the end of part one. I'll come back with part two.